Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and today with me, my guest is Teresa Hummel Crowlinger, culture maven and laughologist with High Five Performance Incorporated. And you can find her on the web at www dot high five performance dot com. Teresa, welcome to oh, Significant friend. TV. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here with you. Oh, my pleasure. Now, first of all, I want to say lovely necklace. Oh, thank you. Tell me about the necklace. This well, is totally off script, but I want to know. This is, it's good chi. It's good energy. Mm. These are little cr creatures that are, um, they're, they're called ammonites. Mm -hmm. So they are no longer with us, but they are related to the Nautilus. I don't know if you ever see the Nautilus. Mm -hmm. But it is believed that if you wear this, it creates good energy for you. And I thought, wow, I'm going to meet with my friend Fran mm -hmm. and be on TV. I mm -hmm. want some good energy. I love it. Thank I you. Love it. So it's pretty, too. So. And it is. It's pretty. Yeah. I saw the pearl. I saw the Nautilus. I saw the presentation. It's a nice reflection on the black and red. I'm like, this is Teresa, yeah. culture maven. I didn't know if it was, you know, <laughs> no, culture. Tell me about you, culture maven. It is related yeah. to culture because yeah. having a good culture, you have good energy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I became fascinated with corporate culture just through my very first job experience, my real job experience at Prudential, and I was mm -hmm. there for 18 years. And frankly, that's how I got into this line of work got into corporate training, organizational development, and what I realized is the foundation of any solid organization is not just the product, is not oh, just goodness. the leaders, but actually this almost intangible thing called organizational culture. Mm -hmm. And when you do things right, the culture is great. And when yeah. you do not so good things, or frankly, ignore it. Ignore it, ignore it, right it can mm -hmm. be not so good. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is twofold. One, people are unhappy and you don't make as much money. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having a good culture is not just a nice thing to have, mm -hmm. although I would argue, let's just do it because it's a nice <laughs> thing to have, you know. But I think as a business person, wouldn't you like to make more money? Wouldn't you like mm -hmm. to be more productive? And certainly there have been a number of studies that have been done uh, through the Gallup organization, um, mm -hmm. Through, uh, oh, and I can't remember the other name of the place. Of course, when I get on camera, I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, but there's actually data that right. supports this. This is not just a feel-good thing. Mm -hmm. It's about smart business people take care of their, their culture. Yeah. Yeah. Totally cool. Well, you know, on this show, I'd like to focus on three things. Significant, business, and results. Okay. And part of significant, in a lot of ways, is about the person. You know, who are you? How do you become significant? And how do others see the significant in you? And another part is, what's your significant story? So that's really where I'd like to start. Can you share a significant moment in your life, and I'm primarily interviewing entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. that influenced you as an entrepreneur? I think it all started. It all started. It did start at Prudential. Yeah. Um, I had been that's at Prudential for a number of years, and frankly, at the time I started working in a big company, mm -hmm. most of us had the mindset that you get the job with the big company mm -hmm. and you stay with the big company right, right. and then you retire and maybe there's a nice parting gift and then you, I don't know, buy a sailboat and go around the world. I don't mm -hmm. know. But, right, but it was, right. that's what you did. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that was really my mindset. I got in at Prudential. Um, I started to build a career for myself. I loved, love, love mm -hmm. the company. And that was the game plan. And in the 90s, not just Prudential, but many, many large organizations began to re-engineer. I don't know if we remember the whole re-engineering. Yes. And, and yes. there were, uh, and it was all about building efficiencies. And so sometimes whole departments, whole groups were, for lack of a better word, downsized, right. were, right. were let go during a reorganization. And mm -hmm. sometimes I get it. It makes business sense, mm -hmm. maybe short term, maybe long term, sometimes right. Right. short term. Only short term. But yeah. um, this is what started to happen. And in 1996, that was my turn to experience that. And when I did, it was actually, it was an epiphany moment. It was a blessing, mm -hmm. although that day I didn't feel that it was. Mm -hmm. There was a reorganization of our department and we were told you'll have 30, 60, or 90 days, but these wow. jobs are going away. 
Mm -hmm. And that day I realized I have to own my career. Mm -hmm. I have to drive my career boat, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't care about my career, but certainly it was more of a partnership with my organization. Mm -hmm. But from that day forward, I owned it. Mm -hmm. I made sure I networked. I mm -hmm. made sure I went to classes, whether mm -hmm. they paid or not. Mm -hmm. I got more certifications. And frankly, I focused on building a personal brand mm -hmm. so that when the time came that I really needed to go out on my own, I was well prepared. Right, right. Yeah. So the, the beauty is, back in that, at that time, in 1996, I actually found another job within Prudential and hung on for a few years. And it was wonderful. I went to a department that I learned a whole new topic and made all new friends and frankly made <laughs> far more money, which was wonderful. But then again, there was a reorganization. Mm -hmm. Our jobs went up to North Jersey and I decided, oh, I think I'm ready to go out on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's how it all started. But the beautiful thing was I was prepared. I love it. I was prepared. I had a lot of people right. in my network. Right. And uh, financially, I'd squirreled mm -hmm. some money away because you want to mm -hmm. have some money uh, mm -hmm. set aside. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how it all started. Wow. Thank you, Mother Prue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm hearing preparation um, and planning, but I'm also hearing passion. I mean, ever since I first met you, it's you have a, a smile. Um, your personal brand, as you shared a number of times, is about love. It is. Um, you are giving, you start things, you empower others. Um, so it may be a challenging question to ask in a short period of time, but when's a time when your passion and your business purpose intersected? And, and how did it make you feel? Oh my God, I think it's always intersected. I thought you would say that. I think it's always you intersected. It. I do. It. And what a blessing. And I actually do an exercise with people who um, aren't finding that intersection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's from good to great. It's from Jim mm -hmm. Collins' book. I think it's called The Hedgehog Concept. Mm -hmm. It's the intersection <laughs> of the three circles. And I ask people first, what are you naturally good at? Mm -hmm. Not what are you competent at? Because I'm mm -hmm. competent at things, but I'm not naturally good at them. But mm -hmm. there are things that I'm naturally good at. They just flow through me. It's almost easy mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. What do you like? What are you passionate about? What excites you? I can tell you, this Saturday, I did a uh, volunteer activity with, some friends at a homeless shelter. Oh, I saw that on Facebook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just such a great day. And um, and it, it really wasn't difficult to coordinate. I right. reached out to a group right. of friends. I need donations. I need money. I need people to pack bags and I need people to distribute. Mm -hmm. Who's up for it? Mm -hmm. People. Mm -hmm. Cash. Mm -hmm. Gifts. Mm -hmm. It all came together. That morning, I felt like a kid on Christmas morning. I'm like, oh, today's the homeless shelter day. Uh -huh. Today's the homeless shelter day. We get to go and pack our bags and get them. And see, that is a message to me mm -hmm. that whatever I'm doing, if it uplifts people, if it gives mm -hmm. them hope, if it frankly makes them feel good, mm -hmm. that's got to be part of what I'm doing right. as a career. Right. And how many jobs are out there like that? I think a lot. Right, right. There's a lot. Right. So, mm. so I'm very blessed. Very, very totally, blessed. Totally Not to blessed. say that I don't occasionally have a day where I'm like, wow, this isn't fun. <laughs> I mean, every now and then you have that day where you're like, wow, thought this would be fun. Not so much. It's okay. We'll kiss it up to God. That's a very Catholic thing to say. So, but most days are excellent. Yeah. And, and it's, you have that mindset. Yeah, and like, you live it and encourage it in others. I love that you remember the brand is love. Actually, my friend Brian Fishbone, and if Brian is oh, watching, God, I yes. love Brian. I love Brian, Brian too. was the one yeah. who told me, Teresa, your brand is love. And uh, in the note that you sent mm -hmm. me before the show, I, I think there was a, a line that said, if you want to bring something mm -hmm. to share. So yeah, I actually yeah. brought, this is crazy. You're going to look at this mm -hmm. and say, oh my gosh, what's in there? Um, okay. This is a small blessing bag. There are also mm -hmm. large blessing bags <laughs> that are filled with many items. I put these small blessing bags in my uh, briefcase when I go downtown. Mm -hmm. And if there are homeless people who are asking for help, mm -hmm. um, or even some of them who may not be asking for help, but I can tell they could use some help, mm -hmm. I often give them a blessing bag. This is so easy. $5 Dunkin' Donuts gift card, some peanut butter crackers, and like a high protein candy with nuts. Mm. So easy. I'll put five of these in my bag. We're good to go. 
and wow, my day is complete. So, but that's that's, that's part of the love brand. Random act of kindness. It is well because you know the opportunity is sure. going to be there. There's right. actually a homeless gentleman who is outside of our pyramid club. Mm -hmm. um, not every day, but he's there some days, and he has a cat. So I actually pack a can of cat food. Oh, so if I cool. see him, I can how give him cool. this bag and a can of cat food. <laughs> Has nothing to do with my real job, but this just makes me feel like don't you feel doesn't everybody feel like they need yeah. to be doing something to Absolutely. make the world a better place? And you know, you opened with data. Studies show that when you do something that helps someone else feel better, you feel better too. You do. Um, let's talk about results. Okay. Your business is called High Five Performance Inc. What have you done for others that okay. you're really proud of? What's oh the result? Well, for the name of the company is because I do high five people. I like, I like to celebrate. Mm -hmm. I like to celebrate success, small successes, big successes. Mm -hmm. A couple of things that I'm really, really proud of. Uh, one is an organization that really, frankly, needed some love. Mm -hmm. uh, great <laughs> leaders, uh, good product, good, good company. They had a very high turnover problem, mm -hmm. and they weren't quite sure what to do to get people to stay. Uh, in fact, it was over 50% turnover at the time. It was, it was pretty rough. Yeah, wow. and it was not the kind of job that you should have that kind mm -hmm. of turnover. Mm -hmm. So I was brought in, we worked together, and I almost felt like a pastor. I almost felt like, do you believe? Because wow. you, you have to believe yes. things are going to get better. Yes. If you don't, yes. it's not going right. to get better. Right. And they, we, yeah, Teresa, we do believe. Mm -hmm. And they worked with me. Not only did we stop the turnover, but within three years, we made Best Place to Work PA. Whoa, yeah. I then, remember that. Yeah. yeah, and we made that list a couple years in a row. We've made top workplaces in Philadelphia. So to me, what a testament to if if you as an organization embrace good best practices for mm -hmm. your people it doesn't even have to cost a lot of money that's the funny mm -hmm. thing it's a mindfulness it's a let's make sure we do these things um, not only will you uh, stop turnover and en engage your employees but if you want to you can make best place to work list which is great, great. for recruiting you can put it on your uh, careers page and people mm -hmm. see wow this must be a good place to work because you met the criteria for mm -hmm. that list and it so, probably impacts your vendors your investors your stock if you're publicly yeah known. right right yeah so that's that's totally my cool. my number one favorite culture story mm -hmm. love that number two I love working with technical staff, scientific staff, tech, tech, technology professionals who get promoted into leadership mm. roles and help them find the leader in themselves because it's there. We all right. have it. Right. But our wiring may not naturally lead to the people thing. Mm -hmm. Right. They're right. often highly analytical. Yes. Like task, not yes. people. Right. Yeah, well, because the yeah. joy comes from completing sure. the task. Sure. There, for many, and I've taught them, I don't really get joy from having a one-on-one -on -one conversation <laughs> with my staff. There's no joy there. Why would there. I talk to them? I can I've, send them an email. Right. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Truly. Right. But the beautiful thing is, over time, and I've seen this, and I, I, there's so many people that I could give you their names, and, and they would laugh and tell you the story, mm -hmm. where they were very much, I don't really want to talk to my staff. I really, mm -hmm. I was a good technologist, and I just who now love the people end. Wow. Who have become Powerful. such strong people leaders because it was within them, mm -hmm. but they had to tap into it and get comfortable with it and development. Mm. And organizations that give those folks the tools and the training and the opportunity and the coaching, they get better. And guess what? Then you have more productive staff, more engaged staff, and you make more money. So as much as I like love, I love money too. Money's good. <laughs> Money's always good. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a really wonderful wrap-up of you and your company. And I wanted you in maybe 15 seconds, tell us about the fact that you're a leftologist. 15 seconds. Oh. <laughs> when I left Prudential, mm -hmm. I enrolled in a comedy class at Montgomery County Community College. Mm -hmm. And from there, started a comedy career that I had never <laughs> planned, uh, would never have dreamed about. But I actually do paid stand-up comedy and have since 2002. Mm. Yeah, yeah. so I still do that. But the beautiful thing about that is not just doing the stand-up comedy and the circle of friends that I've made through that mm -hmm. who are just wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, but it's also I can weave that humor into everything right. I do. I, I can't I even help that. myself. 
it's in my training, it's in my coaching, uh, it's in my consulting practice. So if you don't like to laugh, I'm probably not for you, and that's that's okay. <laughs> but if you like to laugh, you like to be real, and you want to have some fun, respectfully so, uh, I'm, I'm a great person to work with. So, I yeah. totally agree, and you're a great friend. Oh, Fran, thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you for being on the show. Love you. Thank, I love you, too. <laughs> I love you, too. And so I'd like to share the love about Teresa Hummel Crowlinger with you. If you want to get in touch with her, remember she is a culture maven and lapologist, and her company is called High Five Performance Inc. And you can find her on the web at highfiveperformance.com. I'm Fran McNeil, and thank you for watching Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs.